and gentlemen. My name is Junior Che with Berkeley Nucleonics. I am the RF product manager. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to go over our agenda today. Uh, first, we'll be going over phase noise testing and the methods to measure phase noise. Uh, we'll use our model 7340 as an example. Uh, second, we'll go over signal sources with a focus on antenna testing. And of course, uh, we'll use our signal sources as examples. And then finally, our new products coming down the pipeline, uh, model 875, 8060. Very excited to uh, uh, speak on that and, and show you how they can be of great benefit for you. So phase noise. This is a term that is uh, quite popular in the, uh, in the RF industry. Um, possibly one of the most important specs that people really, really care about. Now, what is phase noise? This is a question that uh, many people do ask us. And phase noise is basically the frequency stability of a signal, more specifically within an oscillator. Uh, if you can imagine uh, a communications link through radio or through your cell phone, uh, if a component in there, whether it's uh, the antenna or the receiver, has uh, bad phase noise, you will uh, experience that through communication error, uh, dropping, or uh, a, a noisy connection. So as you can uh, imagine, many uh, manufacturers of these type of components really, really care about phase noise, uh, and they need a great solution to measure that. Oh, So there are three ways to measure phase noise. Uh, the first is using a spectrum analyzer which is the oldest and most simplest method. Uh, basically, you would get your device connected to the uh, spectrum analyzer and measure the phase noise. But there are some limitations to this uh, method. Uh, the main limitation being this, the noise floor of the spectrum analyzer must be lower than the DUT. Um, also, there's no way to distinguish AM noise from phase noise, which is also very important. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, the components of today uh, have very, very low phase noise. So using a spectrum analyzer may not be very efficient. The second way to measure phase noise is through IQ demodulation. This is basically down converting your signal into baseband and measure directly through an analog to digital converter. Uh, this is very interesting as it is the only digital method to measure phase noise. But the main limitation to that is you will need to have multiple ADCs within your unit to measure simultaneously. And, and that um, really equals a very high price. Uh, there, from my experience, there's only one manufacturer that offers this type of solution on the market. And it is not Keysight. It is not us. Only one person left. I will let you take the guess. Uh, the third way is the phase detector technique. A more popular technique, uh, RPNT also uses this, uh, uh, this method uh, along with uh, many of the manufacturers. Uh, basically what this is, is uh, your device signal is mixed with the reference signal using the same frequency uh, that ends up becoming a phase detector mixer. Now there are some limitations to this as well, uh, especially your reference source that you're mixing with the DUT must have lower phase noise than the DUT itself. Um, I will get into how our unit uh, sort of tackles these limitations uh, in the next couple of slides, but this is the, the main method that uh, RPNT uses along with many other major manufacturers. So moving on, uh, cross-correlation method. Now this is very, very important. Uh, considered one of the best ways to uh, measure phase noise to get the most accurate measurements possible. Now, as I mentioned in the last slide, our unit does the phase detector technique. Now our unit has two channels. So each channel has a phase detector mixer. Now. We mentioned the limitations before that those references in those mixers must have a, uh, um, a lower noise floor. 
So having two mixers, we can cross correlate the results of those uh, measurements to strip away the excess noise. And, and in, in essence, uh, taking care of those limitations we talked about before. And again, this is the, uh, the tried and true method, one of the, um, uh, the most accurate ways to measure phase noise. Now, there's a quick little chart here that uh, sort of shows uh, visually how cross-correlation works. Now, as you can see, there is the signal source under test. That signal will go to both of the channels, will be split and go to both of the channels uh, in our phase noise tester. Now, each one of those mixers, as you can see, channel 1 and channel 2 will uh, shoot out a, a measurement. And that will go to a digital signal processing unit where the cross-correlation or quote-unquote magic happens. So uh, the number of correlations also can determine how accurate of a uh, measurement that you can get. So if you look at the chart below, uh, let's say for 10 correlations, you can get a noise reduction of about minus 5 dB. But uh, if you increase that, let's say up to 10,000 correlations, that can give you a noise reduction of minus 20 dB, which is uh, very good, very crucial, especially when you are testing very low noise devices.